All right, I think we're all set to go. Uh, David, Dr. David, thank you so much for that uh, very nice introduction. I very much appreciate it and uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for taking the time uh, to be here this evening. And we're going to start with this big, long, complicated title called New Methods for Producing Photobiomodulation Effects in Humans and Animals Use Utilizing a Novel Nanotechnology Organic Antenna with the applications including an anti-aging effect by reduction in age-related inflammatory markers. Now that's a mouthful, so why don't we make this nice and simple and just refer to this as a revolutionary new approach to anti-aging. And when we're talking about this being a new approach to anti-aging, we have to look at what's going on historically uh, in the field of anti-aging and how we got to where we are today. When we look over uh, the past 50 or 60 years, we see uh, nutrition exercise playing very important roles in anti-aging. Uh, when we got into the 70s, it was all about megadosing. As information has progressed, we get in later into the 90s, and now it's more about uh, hormone replacement, growth hormones, and today in the 2000s, uh, we're talking more about telomeres. But the common thread between all of these approaches is that it predominantly relies on the biochemical approaches or bio, biochemical mechanisms within the human body. And what Dr. Haltewanger and I are going to be uh, presenting this evening is a radically new approach which takes advantage of the biophysical properties of the human body. Now, I'm really going to be focusing in on one aspect of our technology, which is anti-aging. And then Dr. Haltewanger, in about an hour from now, is going to be getting into tremendous detail on how these mechanisms actually work at the cellular level, at the genetic level, how we can get specific genetic expression uh, by, using, uh, by using bioelectrical and biomagnetic switches that already exist within the cells. Uh, but the important thing to know is that with this technology, we're able to activate biochemical mechanisms utilizing a biophysical phenomena. So let's start with photobiomodulation first. Uh, some of you may or may not be familiar with this, but photobiomodulation describes how we can activate or stimulate photoreceptors within the cell. Now, this is a new and emerging area of medicine. And when we talk about photobiomodulation, it typically describes low-level light therapy or low-level laser therapy. There's some type of active electronic device that is applying very low levels of light to the uh, skin. And in turn, this will activate, uh, let's say in one example, production of ATP within the mitochondria. So here's a few uh, prior art devices. Uh, this could be infrared energy. Uh, it could be uh, a very uh, narrow band of energy, such as what we find with uh, lasers. But in any case, we're taking an active light source and we're applying it to the body for a therapeutic effect. And here are a few examples of products that are on the market. But what we're going to be presenting is an entirely new way to activate biochemical processes that take advantage of the uh, photoreceptors within the cells. But this technology overcomes all of the disadvantages that are inherent in low-level light therapy. Now, LifeWave technology, instead of being an active electronic device like a laser, is going to produce low-level light by utilizing uh, what we refer to as a nanoscale organic antenna. And the beauty of this is that the power supply or the power source for this antenna is body heat. So you take a LifeWave patch, you apply it to the body, 
and it starts to emit very low levels of light that will activate specific biochemical processes within the body. This method is incredibly efficient, it's very convenient, and unlike laser therapy, the cost of an application is very low and very affordable. Now, when we started the company in 2002, uh, I started the company in 2002, and then Dr. Haltewanger joined me in 2003, uh, and then we began our marketing and distribution in 2004. The very first product that we had was designed to elevate fat burning. And this resulted in a product which we call Energy Enhancer. And this product uh, was our very first one. We, we had a tremendous success with it. We started marketing in the United States. And then we began to listen to our customers and our members. And um, they started talking about anti-aging or potential anti-aging applications for the technology. So one by one, we started to uh, develop new products that uh, could produce anti-aging effects. And uh, specifically, this evening, I'm going to be focusing in on one of our products called LifeWave Eon. Now, in order to appreciate how the Eon product works, uh, first, one of the things that we want to understand is that it's very well known that inflammatory markers such as C-reactive proteins, inflammatory cytokines, lipid peroxides, homocysteine, fibrinogen, when levels of these inflammatory chemicals are elevated, we can get effects of accelerated aging and a shortening of the lifespan through breaks in the strands of DNA. We also uh, see an associated increase of uh, levels of oxidative uh, chemicals, so an increase in oxidative stress on the body in conjunction with elevated levels of these inflammatory markers. And what we're able to do with the Eon technology is reduce these inflammatory chemicals that are creating stress on the human system, whether or not that be at the, uh, at the level of the DNA, the cells, or even the organs. And by reducing inflammation, we are able to achieve an anti-aging effect in a very new and valuable way. Now, uh, Deepak Chopra, uh, you know, I'm sure you've all heard of, he's a medical doctor here in Southern California. Uh, he states in uh, one of his books that most people think that aging is irreversible, but we know that there are mechanisms in the human body that are regenerative in nature where we can actually reverse some of the signs and the symptoms of aging. Now, traditionally, uh, there's a 5,000-year history of yoga, breathing techniques, and meditation in India which have been used to slow down and even reverse some of the effects of aging. But we want to see if we can use modern technology. Uh, it, most of us may not have time to meditate, so maybe we can have modern technology provide a solution. Now, before we get too far into this, I want to give you an example of what's actually possible with LifeWave, because at the end of the day, uh, we're not talking about something which is speculative, uh, this is not something that we've just done on mice and we're hoping to apply it to, uh, to human beings in the near future. Uh, this is something that we have been working on for 10 years. Uh, we've been at market successfully with this technology for the past eight years. We have over 60 clinical studies. So this is, this is real and it's being used by people today to help provide uh, very dramatic and very real anti-aging benefits. Now, while the uh, vast percentage of clinical studies that we perform are on human beings, we actually have several studies which we have performed on animals. 
Now in this picture on the left is a veterinary acupuncturist that we work with. Her name is Dr. Lauren Durock. And uh, this is one of the, her uh, horses that she owns up in uh, Fresno, California. The name of the horse is Center. And as you can see, it's a very old horse, 31 years old. And this is a picture of Center as of December 2010. Now, this is what happened after only six months of using our new Eon patch. And do a comparison, there's the horse before and after. So as you can see, there's been a very, very dramatic change. So how is this possible? Well, one of the diagnostic techniques that we use in our clinical research, and uh, there are many uh, diagnostic techniques that we use. I understand many of you are medical doctors on the line with us tonight. We do use conventional blood, urine, and saliva testing. Uh, I'm going to be getting into detail on a new pilot study that we just uh, performed recently. Uh, Dr. Haltewanger will be getting into even more detail. But in addition to traditional blood, urine, and saliva testing, uh, we also use other techniques, and uh, one is medical infrared imaging, or uh, the older word for that, which is thermography. And uh, thermography can give us a clue as to why such a dramatic transformation or such a dramatic anti-aging effect can take place. So the above image uh, was taken of a horse in uh, one of the clinical studies that we've done, and these areas of uh, red, uh, purple areas are abnormal heating in and around the heart. And um, this would indicate potentially a chronic condition. Now this is what happens after only 20 minutes of applying the LifeWave Eon patch. We can see that there is now a normal distribution of heat. And all of these uh, chronic areas of inflammation are completely gone. Now let's use a different case. Uh, this is a thermographic image that was taken of a dog. And in this case, we have the opposite condition. All these blue areas indicate a dramatic case of impaired circulation. Now again, we apply the LifeWave Eon technology, and in only 20 minutes, there is a massive change in the thermal distribution within this dog. And this is in fact indicative of a massive uh, change and normalization of the autonomic nervous system. Now, as I mentioned, we, uh, the vast majority of our clinical studies have been on human beings. This would be an example of someone that was experiencing pain and tension in their uh, upper neck and shoulders, and as well as their lower back. And uh, this example, again, shows how with only 20 minutes of applying our technology, we can have a massive reduction in inflammation and pain. So this individual uh, would have experienced a, a significant reduction in pain as well as a, a significant improvement in range of motion. So what's going on here? Well, we had uh, conducted a, a clinical study with a uh, biofeedback expert, Dr. Tom Budzinski, and uh, what we wanted to do was look at and measure uh, the uh, sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system and find out when the LifeWave Eon product is applied to the body, do we have any changes that occur in the nervous system? And this would be important because as uh, Dr. Becker pointed out in the 1960s and 1970s in his book, The Body Electric, it is the bioelectrical properties of the body that, in fact, control the biochemistry. 
So the thought process here was that if we have chronic states of inflammation and we have chronic states of elevated levels of uh, oxidative chemicals that are causing accelerated aging, could we in fact reduce these levels of these harmful chemicals through control or balancing of the uh, autonomic nervous system and see seeking a balance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic states. So we in fact uh, found that this was the case and I will keep moving along. Now let me get back a little bit more towards photobiomodulation on this method of action. Um, back over 10 years ago now, there was research that was funded by DARPA and uh, DARPA stands for the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency. This is the effectively the branch of the government that funds and oversees research as it applies to the military. And uh, Dr. Harry Whelan was interested in this phenomena of photobiomodulation and how it could be applied to advanced healing techniques. And uh, principally, Whelan was looking at pain relief. And uh, what he found in his clinical research was that infrared energy and specifically uh, infrared light in the, in the near infrared band, specific wavelengths of light were able to elevate mitochondrial energy. Now this is really important because elevation of ATP leads to pain reduction. In addition to uh, relief of pain, we also see that when ATP is elevated, the basic unit of energy in the human body, we get phenomena where injuries repair more quickly, uh, there's anti-aging mechanisms that are activated. We've seen in our own research that we actually get an expansion of the cell. This means that uh, if you were to use bioimpedance analysis, you could actually measure an increase in the phase angle of the cell and uh, an increase in the cell capacitance. This is critically important because we know that when we're born, our uh, cell potential is between 70 millivolts, 100 millivolts. As we age, that begins to decline. And if there's a mechanism by which we can reverse uh, that process, it would be very, very valuable within the scope of healing and anti-aging. Now, life wave patches, what they do is they emit very specific wavelengths of light. So this is a photobiomodulation effect without having to use a laser or other active light source. So how, does, how do we do this? Well, life wave patches contain organic crystals. And these organic crystals are on the nanoscale. I'm going to show you some pictures in just a moment. Uh, we just uh, had uh, completed a clinical study, a microscopy study actually, a new one uh, that we did over in uh, Europe. And uh, it was very, very interesting to, to see what these crystals look like. But in any case, um, we construct these uh, organic antennas out of crystals that emit very specific wavelengths of light when they're exposed or activated by body heat. So the implication of this is that we can have a device that looks like a patch, except nothing's actually going into the body. You apply it, the patches begin to emit light, and they activate photoreceptors within the cell. So here's an example of some uh, microscopy work that we've done to give you an idea what these nanoscale crystals in fact look like. So again, to summarize, life wave patches are non-transdermal. So unlike a uh, smoker's patch or a weight loss patch where we're trying to deliver a drug or a uh, herb through the skin, this is a non-transdermal mechanism. We're not trying to uh, deliver any chemical through the skin, 
What we're doing is delivering light. These crystals emit specific wavelengths of light that cause specific biochemical reactions within the human body. Now, as I mentioned before, LifeWave has performed over 60 clinical studies. I think we're up to clinical study number 67 now. Uh, we've done this over the past 10 years. We've used uh, many different types of diagnostic techniques, and many of our studies are published in peer review. Uh, so for more information on this, please visit our website at lifewave.com, and you'll see that we have a button there on the home page that says research. Uh, you can also go to our product page and click on the research tab. Uh, but we have lots of uh, papers and more information where you can find out about LifeWave. Now, I want to get into some of the, the fun stuff here uh, on specifically what this product and what this technology can do for, for you. And I'm going to use a few of our clinical studies as examples. So going back a few years ago, when we, this is, uh, I guess, in 2010 and even er, later in 2009, we were looking at uh, coming out with a new anti-aging product. Uh, to give you a frame of reference, uh, we had already figured out a way that we could elevate glutathione levels uh, using one of our products, uh, carnosine, which is an extraordinarily powerful anti-glycation nutrient. It's a uh, dipeptide. Uh, that is found within the human body, uh, predominantly in uh, skeletal muscle. Carnosine, th this patch elevates uh, the antioxidant carnosine. We'd already done that, but uh, we wanted to look at perhaps a new method of attacking the problem of aging, and um, we wanted to look at how can we reduce biochemical stress on the human body. So we know biochemical stress is caused by free radicals. Uh, we know it's caused by inflammation. Could there be a way that we could reduce um, multiple inflammatory markers and uh, radicals with one single product? So that was the goal. So we developed this Eon product, and <clears throat> we did an initial uh, clinical study. This was done as a pilot. Uh, it was performed with the Eon patch with eight people. So uh, this, is a, this is just a small pilot. Uh, and we utilized blood, urine, and saliva testing. And we got some very, very interesting results. Uh, we found that, number one, we got a mild elevation of glutathione. Uh, mild is a relative term. It was about a 10 to 15 percent increase in only one week. Now that would be compared to about a 14 percent increase on oral supplements of glutathione over a 30-day period. But still, by by our terms, uh, this would have been a mild increase in glutathione. We saw a uh, mild increase in superoxide dismutase, and perhaps uh, more significantly, an increase in DHEA levels, which you know is, is the fountain of youth hormone. So we're very excited about these initial results. Now, we also saw in our saliva testing that there was a balancing of cortisol levels. Seeing that if people had high levels of cortisol, they declined. If they had low levels of cortisol, they came back up. So we saw that was a very interesting phenomenon. Now, of course, we wanted to look at inflammation. And one of the things that we were very excited about in this initial pilot was that there was a significant decrease in levels of C-reactive proteins, fibrinogen, homocysteine, and lipid peroxide levels. As a matter of fact, uh, just this morning I was uh, reading uh, from uh, Dr. Mercola on his website uh, about a clinical study that was done with vegetarians and how many vegetarians can have deficiencies of vitamin B12. And when there's a no or little B12 present, then homocysteine cannot be converted over into methionine. And when this happens, there's a higher incidence of uh, cardiovascular disease. 
So uh, all of these inflammatory markers, if they, if they get out of check, if they're elevated uh, in a chronic state, can cause uh, damage to the organs, the cells, even the DNA, and lead to a phenomena of accelerated aging. Now, we have uh, 11 clinical studies just on the EON patch, so I'm pulling a few here. This is a uh, relatively new one that we did, double-blind placebo-controlled study. And uh, this one utilized 60 people. And we used several, instead of taking the uh, biochemical approach of blood, urine, and saliva, we wanted to <clears throat> know what was going on with the bioelectrical properties of the body. So this included a medical device from Europe called electro-interstitial scanning, where we can look at the bioelectrical activity in the organs. Uh, we used uh, medical infrared imaging, uh, a technique from Russia called GDV, which is gas discharge visualization. This looks at the electrical charge over the surface of the body. And uh, another technology called PIP, which is using sound. Now the results of this study using bioelectrical analysis also indicated reduction in inflammation, reduction in o oxidative stress, and a significant improvement in the bioelectrical properties of the human biofield. These results reinforce the neurological testing we had done with EEG. Another study that we did was with heart rate variability. And this was a pilot study that was performed with 20 people uh, using a piece of biocom equipment. Now HRV is going to be looking at the uh, ratio of muscle contractions within the heart as one method of describing it. So what we found with this technique is again, the Eon patch normalized the autonomic nervous system. The, the best example that I could give you, if someone was in a predominantly sympathetically driven state, so they're a type A personality, the Eon patch produces a relaxation response. People handle stress better when they use this product. Now, I'd like to go uh, take a minute here and go into some detail on a new pilot study uh, that we just got the results back on because they're very, very exciting and I thought I would share them with you. And this has to do with inflammatory cytokines. Uh, now, this study was done with 13 people, 7 men and 6 women. And we used uh, blood testing, uh, which was performed uh, using a product from Aphometrics. And we also took subjective measures on how people felt when they were using our product. Now most of you probably know what cytokines are, but for those of you that are not medical doctors, cytokines are substances that relay signals between the immune system cells. In actually analyzing cytokines, it's fairly difficult to do on one level because cytokines so closely resemble hormones. In other words, and also some people actually uh, think they could be classified as hormones, but they're signaling molecules. And when uh, inflammatory cytokines are elevated, what this most often means is that the immune system is engaged with dealing with some sort of health threat. So on the surface, we would want to say, well, great, you know, if uh, if the human body is being invaded by some type of virus or bacteria or cancer, we want to be able to destroy that invading organism. That would, that would be fine. However, when the antioxidant system is stressed, inflammatory chemicals like cytokines can get out of control and they can actually damage healthy tissue. In addition, to the organism that they're trying to attack. So we need to be able to keep uh, these inflammatory markers under control. So
So here we go. If inflammatory cytokine levels can be reduced, then this could be an indication that, the, that also that the health threat to the body has diminished. So we may actually get an improvement in the immune system. So what we did was we collected 76 uh, human serum samples, blood samples, and they were processed. And uh, the study was primarily concerned with whether or not our eon patch could decrease inflammatory cytokine levels. Uh, so this test was fairly simple. We used blood draw number one as a baseline. Of course, when we get into pharmacological testing, uh, we'll use a much longer baseline period, uh, say 10 days. Uh, and then after the first blood draw, patients were treated with the eon patch, and then four additional blood draws were collected, one per day, to uh, monitor what was going on. Now, statistical comparisons were first uh, made between the immune signaling molecules, which were referred to as the analytes, and then they were observed concentrations at each consecutive blood draw. So, uh, there were about, oh, I guess, a hundred or so inflammatory chemicals that were looked at, and uh, specifically what we saw were a total of five molecules that were reduced. Uh, three molecules achieved statistically highly significant reductions. And again, just for the purpose of clarity, these three molecules are inflammatory cytokines. Now, the other two molecules, statistically speaking, achieved significant reductions. Not highly significant, but significant reductions. Two additional inflammatory markers. Now, interestingly, the this, this subjective uh, information that was acquired during survey all showed highly significant improvement. So people that were using this product, what did they feel? Well, they had more energy. They stated that their, their, their thought process was more clear. They had better mental focus. They recovered from exercise. They didn't get as fatigued. And after exercise, there was a reduction in muscle soreness and pain. So there was a very real and perceivable effect from wearing this product. People's quality of life improved. Now, the average reduction in all three inflammatory cytokine levels was an amazing 96% in only five days. So let's use an example. Let's say that someone was suffering from a um, disorder such as arthritis. And this individual had tremendous pain and inflammation. The quality of life improvement that we would expect to see with the Eon product would be an immediate reduction in inflammation within 20 minutes, an immediate reduction in pain, and this situation would continue to improve over time as the individual uses the product. So the Eon patch demonstrates a, an improvement in general health and over time through uh, reduction in chronic inflammation that we all experience because of daily stress, a very powerful anti-aging effect. Now I'm just going to spend a minute about this, but for your reference, uh, there are tens of thousands of clinical studies that show the connection between chronic inflammation and degenerative effects and accelerated aging. These were some of the uh, interesting things that we pulled off of uh, Life Extension magazine. And um, they have a uh, medical board and they, they try to stay on the cutting edge of what's going on in anti-aging. Uh, but life extension was uh, clearly pointing to this connection between inflammation and elevated levels of um, elevated levels of inflammatory markers and uh, accelerated aging. 
Here's one example. This came from um, this came from this journal, uh, New Surgical Horizons, and it's looking at the connection between chronic inflammation, oxidative stress, and DNA damage. And this paper goes on to talk about how precancerous or cancerous states can develop as a result of uh, chronic elevated levels of specific inflammatory markers and oxidative stress. So persistent oxidative stress, persistent inflammation can damage cells and can even cause an accumulation of damage to the DNA. And all of this stress and oxidative chemicals are initiated uh, through increase in daily stress. Now here's one way that we can look at this that graphically illustrates this connection. We start with uh, stress. Now this could be a uh, physical stress, it could be, uh, it could be emotional. Uh, they, all, they both set off uh, similar reactions, but first we get an increase in oxidative chemicals. Uh, in part, this is due to, it could be due to adrenaline, uh, it could be due to increase in energy metabolism, uh, but we get an elevation in oxidative chemicals and if our antioxidant system is depleted, this can lead to increases in inflammation. If we go into a state where inflammation is chronic, this will cause damage to uh, the cells, the organs, even the DNA. And we describe this process as a very important part of what happens in aging. Now the Eon product is going to start right at the beginning by reducing the stress on the nervous system. So we see a, a balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic states. As a result, we get a decrease in oxidative stress. This is something that we would normally get through supplementation of antioxidants, but we've got a new way of doing this now. And when we get a decrease in oxidation, we're getting a decrease in inflammation. So this product not only is it going to provide a uh, very beneficial anti-aging effect, as a result, we get improvement in quality of life. So what is that going to mean? Well, let's say that you're completely healthy. This, is, this product's going to help to maintain and improve your energy levels. For those that aren't so fortunate, we'll see a reduction in pain and inflammation, and we have some incredible uh, results that we could share with you about just that aspect of the product, life-changing results. Improved quality of the skin. We did a clinical study with two medical doctors in Australia that showed a 300 percent improvement in the quality of the skin in only 90 days of using the Eon product. Now, uh, participants in the study were actually using all three of our anti-aging patches, uh, Eon, Glutathione, and Carnosine. But we're just talking about Eon this evening. Now, we're going to see reductions in stress and inflammation and improvement in organ function. We measured this through interstitial scanning. And uh, just a general improvement in the way that people handle stress. So even though this is anti-aging, and we sometimes think of anti-aging products maybe as having some type of benefits in the future, uh, what's great about this product is that it provides you with real and tangible benefits today. Now, low-level laser therapy or low-level light therapy is expensive, it's time-consuming, you have to have an electronic device. So, Let's say you're, you're sitting there thinking, well, this is all great, uh, but how actually, how difficult is it to use? The beauty of this, because we've got these organic crystals in a patch, you simply apply the technology below your belly button, or uh, most people prefer to use it behind the neck, where, they ca where most people carry stress and tension. It takes uh, less than 10 seconds to apply, and it works all day. So when you get up in the morning, 
You simply apply the product to the back of the neck and you go on your way. It's no more complicated than that. Okay, well, Dr. David, that would uh, conclude my portion of this presentation. So again, I'd like to take this uh, time to thank you for organizing this. And uh, now I'm going to hand this over to Dr. Haltiwanger. Uh, hello. Um, it's kind of hard talking with uh, no audience to participate, so uh, these are somewhat uh, interesting ways of uh, communicating. <clears throat> I'd like to start off by talking about the fact that the body has a energy field um, that permeates all parts of the body and extends out into space. Uh, it's been called different things, the electrodynamic field. Uh, the current terminology is called the biofield. And you can actually uh, look that up in index uh, in PubMed, <clears throat> and it's now an official term. And this standing energy field, in my opinion, comes about as a result of the chemical reactions that are taking place in the body. If you have a chemical reaction where A and B are interacting and C is created, what you're doing is you're moving charge. When you move charge, you basically create an electrical current, but you also create a, a magnetic field. And uh, in, in biological terms, it's called a thermomagnetic field. And this field, in my opinion, is a result of the accumulation of all the biochemical reactions that are taking place in the body. And each reaction that takes place, there's different wavelengths or frequencies of uh, energy that are being released. So this, these, the accumulation of these total uh, wavelengths or frequencies uh, is basically the sum of the entire biofield. And uh, people are looking at this as an information system, and it's also involved in pattern formation. I became uh, aware of this back in 1971, and I started thinking about it then, how the field of energy is involved in creating the patterns of uh, how the body's materials line up and interact with each other. Uh, it's too much to go into on a sm short seminar like this, so we'll have to move past that. Oh, let me see. There we go. Let's start off with uh, looking at how the body is composed of electronic components. Research has shown that the biological molecules and structures of the body are primarily liquid crystals. So we have the cell membrane lipids, the DNA, proteins, enzymes, cholesterol, and even water has liquid crystal properties. And liquid crystals have very unique uh, characteristics. They have the ability to organize and store patterns when exposed to an electrical field. So I think it's important to recognize that we have electrical fields uh, and a, a dynamic electrical field in the body, and then there are smaller uh, subfields present in the various tissues and organs. And each cell has its own electrical field. And I don't think it's an accident that the materials that the body is made of has the ability to form patterns and organize in a self-assembly process in electrical fields. I think this is a natural part of how uh, the body is, or all organisms are composed of electronically active materials. So we see that we have an electrical field is going to be involved in the pattern of interaction of these different substances. Now, if we look at this uh, top part, we see this is a, my a dynamic example of a protein made up of a, a liquid crystal protein. And the blue around that is water molecules. So we find that the materials, the proteins inside the cell, outside the cell, the DNA, the membranes, are surrounded by layers of water, what they call them polarized multilayers. And this will infect the, uh, the, the, the configurational state or the folding state of the, uh, the proteins and the materials. It will affect the electrical properties of these materials. So water in the cell is in two, basically two major forms, unbound water and bound water. And the bound water is interesting if we take this picture here of the saran wrap, 
Can y'all see my little arrow? Yes, we can, Doc. Okay. Yes, we can. I can mute myself. Okay, let me let me go over here and get a different one now. Let's see. Uh, okay, we take this saran wrap. This is basically plastic wrapped around a cardboard tube. If we look at the, the cardboard tube as this protein molecule here, we see that there's organized layers of water molecules around it. And so this is another example here of, of these layers of water molecules around these proteins. And so a protein has a primary structure, which is a chain of amino acids, and there's charges on the backbones of these amino acids, so positive and negative. And the way that the charges line up will cause the protein to fold into secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures. And so these, 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 these patterns that are created by the interaction of the material with the water is, is involved in creating the electronic properties and the configurational or structural states of these materials. This is why dehydration is so important because if you're dehydrated, your proteins which conduct electricity throughout your body become less conductive. They actually become electrical resistors. Now David mentioned the concept of an electrical potential, a membrane potential. This is a, a model of a cell membrane. This is two layers of fat molecules lined up, and these are proteins that extend through the membrane. This is called a transmembrane protein, and these are glycoproteins that are stuck on, these are, these are sugar moieties, sugar molecules that are stuck on these proteins, and they create what are known as receptors. However, biophysically, these are also electromagnetic antennas. And each receptor structure will respond to a different frequency or wavelength of electrical energy. So we see that we have the lipid molecules. And between, on, on either side of a membrane, we have different levels or concentrations of minerals. And on the inside of the membrane, you have potassium, magnesium, and on the outside, in the bloodstream and the interstitial fluid primarily is sodium and some calcium. So we have a little bit of sodium, we have some calcium, and the differences between these materials, this, this, this layering of minerals on either side of the membrane, this forms an electrical component called a capacitor. So we find that the membrane structure is such that it's an electrical unit. And there's a voltage potential called membrane potential between each, the inside and the outside of the membrane. On the inside, it's negative. And so we call this a, uh, the membrane potential of a normal cell is about 70 millivolts, negative 70 millivolts. Now, if you added all that up into a, a lot of um, surface area, you find that's about 10 million volts per meter of material, which is a lot of power. So we find the membrane is a permeable, selectively permeable barrier that maintains a concentration of minerals on either side of the membrane, and that creates the electrical potential. We also find that membranes have the proper electrical properties, and they act as a guide for moving electrical energy from one place to another. On the outside of the membrane, um, if you had two cells, let me see, if you had a cell here, and a cell here, you'll find that electrical currents will flow between the cells. And they're conducted, conducted pathways. And some of the currents will actually flow in and out of the cells through ion channels. So we find that the, the, the structure of a cell in, inside an organ is an electrically con, electrical unit Organs are electrical conglomerations, or, or conglomerations of cells, and themselves have electrical properties. And we find that the membranes are also liquid crystal resonators, and that they, the, in, the, the, the complex of a membrane protein and a membrane, and the way these proteins interact with each other, they serve as basically communication devices. Uh, in a sense, they're cellular radios. They have all the functions of a radio. They have liquid, what they call a liquid crystal circuit or oscillating circuit. So we find 
that these are able to be tuned. They have the ability to amplify. They have the ability to uh, permit energy signals to initiate biological effects. So th these are very important properties when you start thinking about the fact that cells have the ability to conduct from one place to another. They also have the ability to wirelessly receive. So they have basically like, like a phone system in a sense. You have your hardwired phone that's stuck into the wall through the electrical grid or to the uh, telephone wires outside. And then you have your cell phones that are wireless communication devices. And cells have both properties built in. So we find the membrane proteins on the surface of the cells act as detectors and receivers of chemical messages. This is basically the entire paradigm of the pharmaceutical chemical industry. And they talk about the chemical receptors. However, from when, the, when you start studying biophysics, there's another paradigm that comes into play where they're looked at as wireless antennas. So we find these are antennas for electrical frequencies that are arriving at the cell. And different signals can be communicated. We also find the DNA is able to generate these signals. Now, electromagnetic energy, light is a form of electromagnetic energy. And we know that DNA will generate what are called biophotons. And it's a lot of research is now taking place on the concept of biophotons. And they're looking at these as communication signals that the cell uses to control its actions, such as DNA commu communicating with uh, RNA, DNA communicating with protein structures. So we look at biophotons as an internal communication system that's taking place. So we find that the cell membrane, along with the protein complexes, act as signal detectors signal amplifiers and signal transducers. That means they can take one signal and convert it into a different type of signal. So instead of looking at this just as a chemical receptor where a substance, uh, let's say uh, dopamine bond is released from one cell. So here's a cell here. And it's releasing this dopamine molecule. And there's a space. And then this receptor on the cell will bind to the dopamine. And that's pretty much the current model of neurotransmission. Another way of looking at it is these are electromagnetic antennas. If you've ever looked at a microwave tower, you'll see these little um, rods sticking out at different levels. And they're picking up different signals of microwave. Same thing has happened at a cellular level. Instead of uh, rods, these are sugar molecules. And basically, these sugar molecules are part of the communication system. Uh, of the body, and there's like seven or eight major sugars that are involved in creating these molecules. Um, so if another way of looking at this is here's a cell membrane, and we look at a cellular circuit. And this a circuit's made up of capacitors, which we've already said the cell membrane is a capacitor, and resistors. And so we find that the membranes of the mitochondria, the nucleus, the cell membrane, act as electronic capacitors. They're storage devices for electrical energy. They're like batteries. And then we find that the internal material inside the cell, uh, which was composed of the, the water and the, uh, the structural elements, such as cytoskeleton proteins, act as resistors. So we have a circuit. So we find that modern electrical devices are made up of transistors, which are semiconductors, resistors, and capacitors. We haven't mentioned this yet, but we find that the major polymers of the body, the proteins, as well as DNA and RNA, are semiconductors. So we have all the various subcomponents that are needed for electronic devices to process information. And so we see that these liquid crystal materials or molecules the body is made up of can possess electronic capabilities enable them to both absorb and emit electromagnetic energy. So here's a protein, semiconductor protein. Here's a DNA molecule. And here's a cell bottle. And there is a electrical frequency, I'm sorry, electrical field is what I'm trying to say, 
inside each cell. The, the interaction of the, these electronic components creates an electrical field inside each cell. Now change in the membrane permeability, and that means what the components, basically what you're looking at structural, is what is the cell membrane made up of. It's made up of fats, and it's made up of cholesterol. And there's different types of fats. These are called phospholipids mostly. And then you have cholesterol. So cholesterol is a natural component of the cells. And if you go into a high altitude or a cold area of the, of the world, your body will slowly increase the amount of cholesterol inside the cells, or inside the cell membrane. If you go into a hot area of the world, the cholesterol amount will go down and the unsaturated fats will go up. So this is why people have to acclimatize when they say go from uh, a hot area to a cold area. It takes them some weeks and months to get fully acclimatized as their body is processing these materials in the diet and, rec and creating the membranes. Uh, and this will also change the permeability. So if you change, that's the structural part. But you can also change the membrane permeability by altering the cell membrane potential or the capacitance. And so this, if you increase the capacitance of the cell, you're going to increase or alter nutrient entry and mineral entry into the cell. You're also going to facilitate the release of toxins from the cell. And so one of the things we learned back in 2005 and 2006 is that energy enhancer patches and ice wave patches increase the capacitance or battery effect to the cells. So basically, it, re, it basically like, it's like a rechargeable battery system. The patches will actually cause the cell membranes to charge up back toward normal. And as they do that, if you charge your batteries up, you're able to operate systems. So let's say you have a, a flashlight and the batteries are exhausted or very weak and you got very little light. You charge them up and now you have a very good beam of light. Well, in the cell membrane, Basically, this is a power conservation system, and, and so the mitochondria of the cells are converting food into ATP, and they're releasing electrons. These electrons get stored in the cell membrane, and you're charging up your battery. And then other components of the cell actually plug into the cell membrane and are able to operate various functions of the cell. So a normal cell membrane capacitance is actually going to help you operate the various functions of the cell, such as protein synthesis. It's going to help facilitate the release of stored toxins. And these are some of the first things we began to see as we started studying ice wave and energy enhancer patches. Now, we may have this effect with other patch products. We just haven't done this testing yet. Now, Dr. Steve? Yes. If I may just uh, come in here. Um, so basically, and correct me if I'm wrong, what, what you're saying is that uh, most of us don't have as much a nutritional deficiency as much as it is an assimilation and usage deficiency, and that that can be changed by just basically manipulating the electrical uh, uh, fields around the cells? Is that kind of like what you're saying? Or well, it, it's all tied together. You have your, first off, a bad diet's a bad diet. And okay. no matter how good you do with your electrical properties, it, it's kind of like taking an old car with a worn out engine. It's a lot better to have a new car with a new engine. Now, mm -hmm. the body will repair itself. So if you get a good diet, you have, you, you, you actually re functioning on the structure part. Now it's a matter of, now I've got a battery, but is it charged? And that's where what I'm talking about. So you have to have a, a, a the, the more, the better your structure is, the better it's going to be able to hold the charge. Now, if you're looking at all this together, this means you have to have good minerals in your diet. So you have to have an adequate supply of, of minerals. And this means your potassium, your calcium, your magnesium, your zinc, your selenium, and, and, and all your trace minerals. So you have to have that. You have to have the right types of fats in your diet. And this is where people, there's an extensive amount of research on omega-3 fatty acids as, as one type of fats. And then there's GLA, gamma-linolenic acid. And 
you have your omega-3 and then you've got CLA, uh, which is a nut conjugated linolytic acid. <coughs> anyway, all these fats are necessary. So you've got omega-3s. And you know you can get these from different places, fish oils, you can get them from algae products, you can get them from um, uh, mostly fish oils, and some, some um, uh, flaxseed oil, uh, another source of these types of fats. And these will rebuild the structure of the membrane. And that's one thing. Good mineralization is going to help also. But then the patches, in a sense, are going to help you recharge these membrane structures is what I'm trying to say. Okay, okay. So it's, it's a combination, like you said, of, 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 of different things. The structure, the components have to be in place, but also you've got to be able to uh, ensure through um, the electrical conducting conductivity uh, that that they are used well, the components are used and integrated well with what right. else is going on in the cell. Got it. Okay. Now, if we look at this is a book written, I think, 1983, Biologically Closed Electrical Circuits. And so we find that protein cell membranes of DNA are not only liquid crystals, but they're also natural semiconductors. And your, your computer is made up of semiconductor materials. Uh, the, the chip that operates in computer is a silicone-based semiconducting material. And we also have these types of structures inside a cell. And this is a cell membrane capacitor. If you, if you show this to an, uh, an electrical engineer, he'll say, oh, that's a capacitor. Yeah, that's a biological structure inside a cell. So we, we see these structures are there, and they ha they're there for a reason, because you have to conduct electricity. I'm going to try to get to that a little bit, a little bit in a few minutes. You have continual circulating electrical circuits throughout the body. That's what they call biologically closed electrical circuits. Another thing to look at is that proteins actually act as switching switches. So we have proteins or semiconductors. That means they conduct and route electrical currents in preferential directions. That's very important. You wouldn't want uh, your, 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 you want to you want to be able to control your power. You don't want a short circuit. If you had an electrical device, you wouldn't want to have it short circuited. You want to have it, the electrical circuits properly conducted. And we find these structures extending out of these cells through the membrane to the interior. So here's one cell bound to this other cell, and it's literally conducting these circuits through different components. And so these are very important when you start looking at the fact that there's a continual circuitry that flows between the cells, electrical currents flow between the cells, and electrical currents flow in and out of cells. So a bioelectrical current is an electrical current, or direct current is a current that flows steadily in one direction. And we find that bioelectrical currents are controlled by changing the electrical conduction of proteins. And one of the things you can do to change the electrical conduction of protein is change the level of hydration in the body. If you dehydrate the body, you become less electrically conductive. We also found that applying patches changes the conduction. This is an actual study from LifeWave. Hold on just a second. Excuse me. We looked at skin conductance readings at four acupuncture sites. Uh, we looked at lung one, pericardium six, stomach 36, kidney six. And we showed an increase in conductance after the application of energy patches. So every this is before, after, before, after, before, after. Each time we put the patches on, the conduction and that acupuncture point increased. That's one. That was in 60 people. Another part of this study, which we feel is probably even more important, is each time an energy patch was placed on the body, the level of skin conductance increased with each application. So the first time we put patches on, the conductance went from here to here. Yet when they measured the second one, it started out higher and went higher. The third time it was the patches taken off, 
put on a different spot, it started higher and went higher again, and the fourth time it was higher to start with, it went higher again. So each time the patch was put on and then replaced and then put on again, the conductance reading increased with each application. This means that we were improving the circuit flow. Now we find that the lipids of cell membrane separate these minerals from one side to the other. And this is my example of a vortex. I don't think these th these th all first off remember this: all energy moves in spirals. All that's the only time I'll probably say all in anything. But that 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 law has never been violated by anything I've ever studied for 30 years. All energy moves in spirals. If you look at spiral galaxies, if you look at water going down a drain, if you look at uh, the winds moving uh, on a plane, you'll see it's all spiral. Okay, anyway, look at a tornado, look at a hurricane. Okay, now because charged ions can only cross the membrane through ion channels, controlling the ion flow gives the membrane electrical conductive property. It actually is a controlling mechanism. So the ability to regulate the permeability of ions allows for bioelectric circuit to continually occur throughout the body. You have these channels, you have minerals moving in, and you have minerals moving out through others. And so you have a continual cycle or circuit of electrical flow in and out of the body. Now, this is the th my theory of how energy enhancer and ice wave increase skin conductivity. Scientists have shown that the presence or conduction of bioelectromagnetic currents drives the chain of healing and repair. And uh, two German scientists, Dr. Neher and Dr. Sackmann, won the Nobel Prize for their work using something called a patch clamp technique, which allowed them to detect electrical currents, very weak electrical currents in the cell membrane. And they discovered these tunnel-like structures called ion channels control the passage in and out of positively charged or negatively charged molecules, particles called ions. And research of this electrical charge has allowed widespread understanding of cell pathology as well as the ability to explain the effect of microcurrent, nanocurrent, and picocurrent levels of electrical stimulation for healing. So my thinking is that if you're looking at, say, an ice wave patches, and there's a negative patch here, and you have a positive patch somewhere else, you're actually creating a current, and you're actually affecting this these, through these ion channels. Why do, why, why do I say that? Because I have seen people get out of pain in two seconds, sometimes even less. I have, I have patched over 4,000 people for pain, and I have had hundreds of people that I put, say, a, um, a negative patch somewhere on their body, and then I take my hand, and I'm going to move the white patch, and I put it down. And before I take my hand off the white patch, they're already out of pain. Now, that is too fast for a chemical reaction to taking place. So it has to be a field effect or an electrical effect. Because I know of no mechanism that can work in one or two seconds in controlling pain. I mean, I... I, if, you had a, if you were laying on a table with an intravenous line put in your arm and you had a, somebody had a syringe of morphine getting ready to squirt it into your arm and you put the ice wave patches in exactly the right place, you, they pers other person would be out of pain before the other person would respond to the morphine going into the vein because it would take 8 to 15 seconds to really start getting into your circulation before it start having an effect, yet you're already out of pain in 2 seconds. So that, in my opinion, it has to be an electrical mechanism, and this is how the electrical mechanisms of the body are put together, through the membranes, which have an electrical property, the proteins that have electrical properties, and these ion channels that, have, that basically um, can help control the electrical properties of the cell. So, That's fascinating. So I'm, we're going to try to study this in the future, but it may be four or five more years. But right now, this is our, my current working theory of how to explain an almost instantaneous pain relief. Now, not everybody's going to have that effect, but if you get the right spots on a person, you're going to see, if you patch up 100 people, you're going to have a couple of people out of that 100 that are going to be like, am I supposed to respond this fast? 
and they'll start looking at you and getting a weird trance. What I tell everybody when I'm patching up with pain patches is I said, this is an electrical mechanism, and it can act very rapidly. So you don't be surprised. Sometimes people have a vast response. Sometimes they don't. But it's like if you go turn on your lamp, you don't wait 15 minutes for the light to come on. It's either on or not on. And so we're looking at an electrical mechanism. So if I hit the right spot with these patches, you might notice a very rapid effect. So I tend to, I try to warn them ahead of time that I'm looking for an electrical mechanism because they don't, they, it's hard for somebody that's been in pain for a long time to suddenly be out of pain in a couple of seconds and make it sense out of it. They think it's all in their mind, but it, it's a real phenomenon. All right, we'll move on. But the question is, Doc, is, I mean, that, first of all, that's fascinating. This is really fascinating stuff. Uh, but is that thing, is that sustained as long as the patch is on, or do they get used to it after a while and the pain comes back while the patch is still on? Sometimes the pain comes back. But we've had some people that have been in pain for months, and they got out of pain after one or two applications of the patches. They didn't, the pain didn't come back. It all depends on, there's different reasons to have pain. There's different processes taking place in the body. And I can't tell you which group of people are going to have the rapid response, but sometimes the pain comes back, you have to put on new pair of patches, or you have to move the patches to different locations. There's a phenomenon that occurs in some people, we call it chasing the dragon, where you put the patches on one place, the pain goes away, but it moves to a different spot. Now, if you think of a water hose, and this flowing, so this is this is the electrical current flows like a water in a water hose, and so the current's going to flow, but all of a sudden, if you've got a kink in the hose here, the energy sense tends to back up in a sense. So the pain was here, you got out of pain, and the circuit started flowing, and it hit another spot, and it backed up again. So it's like these electrical charges are building up over here, and there's an excess build up here. So it move from here to here. So you move the pain from here to here. And that's, so what, some, what you often can do is just move another patch and put it over the new pain spot or move the old patches and put it over or put a third patch on here and often get rid of the pain. Because that's called, that's a phenomenon we call chasing the dragon. So basically it's like you have a water hose and it's got a lot of kinks in it. It's got a kink here and it's got a kink here and it's got a kink here. And this is the electrical conductive pathways aren't properly open. Now let's talk about that from a point of view of a global perspective. And there's a question is how can an energy field accelerate the inhaling process? So from what we've talked about so far, one reason a, a tissue heals slowly because the channels of communication that normally connect that tissue to the rest of the body are not properly functioning. And we're not necessarily referring to blood supply or the nervous system connection, but we're looking at a, an older evolutionary system that's present in even simple animals. It's called the collagen network. The body is the most prominent protein in the body is collagen. And collagen actually is an electrical semiconductor. It's basically an electrical grid. So it's, it's your power grid. And also, it's an information grid. It's kind of like a telephone line and a power line all together. So we look at for an injury to be repaired. Let's say you have an injury over here. What you have to do is you find that tissues some distance away are actually going to be sending electrical signals to that injured tissue. And it's going to do through these channels of communication what we call these bio-circuits, bio-circuits. You can also call it bioelectricity. I'm not a very good writer with this mouse here. So bio-circuits. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to open these circuits as well as the concept of inject essential messages. So what we're doing with the patches is we're actually improving the conduction and we're also wirelessly transmitting signals, wirelessly. I'm not sure how to denote a wireless transmission. So the patches are actually sending signals and opening up these bio circuits, but also sending a wireless transmission to it. So it's like a cell phone in a sense. 
and this is going to facilitate the body's natural repair systems. So when we, in summary, the body's proteins are semiconductors, and the entire fabric of the body, including the interior of the cells, are semiconductors. This means that we find that the body is an electrical commu electronic communication network that has the ability to detect and conduct energy and information, to store information, and to process signals. So when we look at an unhealthy or injured tissue or painful tissue, over time they become less electrically conducted. So this is how a microcurrent therapy would work. If you had an old injury, let's say you've injured your knee, and you've had this chronic problem with your knee, and you put some TENS unit pads or microcurrent pads and hook them up to an electronic device, and you, uh, you turn on this device, it would send an electrical signal that would transmit from one pad to the other and go through the knee. <clears throat> and that has been used by physical therapists and doctors for, for decades. And that's called micro, the original was called TENS unit, transcutaneous electrical stimulation. But um, the newer technology uses weaker current, we, we, a weaker signal. In, in the sense, the body is less is more. The less strong the signal, the better it's received. So these biostimulation electrical therapies, they use low currents, will stimulate cellular physiology and repair. So the research on microcurrent therapy shows if you put a microcurrent device on an area that's injured, you're going to increase protein synthesis, you're going to increase ATP production, you're going to increase the replication of the cells, DNA repair and DNA replication. So you have three important processes going on that's going to be involved in healing of the tissue. Now, it's my opinion, based on our research, that the patches, especially energy patches and ice wave patches that have a positive and negative patch, act as microcurrent devices. He said, we're not putting an electrical current into the cells. We're causing the cells underneath the patches to stimulate to activate and produce their own normalizing electrical current. So that's what's happening is the patches are causing the cells to produce the current. But we're not producing, so this is a natural way. So it's actually more healthy, in my opinion, than electronic external device because we're normalizing a process that's supposed to be there. That's fascinating. This is and this is an example of the circuit flow. So we find that ice wave and energy patches create a biocurrent which when applied and one effect is they charge up cell membrane capacitance. And so we would find this cell membrane in this case has a low potential, 40 to 50. And once we patch the person up and that area starts getting stimulated, the membrane potential rises, say 70 to 100 millivolts. And all of a sudden, you're going to find you're going to increase your production of ATP, and you're going to increase your release of toxins coming out of the cell. And this is what we started seeing back in 2005. We started seeing people, when we put on energy patches, would get metallic taste in their mouth, or chemical taste. And when we tested them, we found they were putting out larger amounts of heavy metals. And this is called a detoxification reaction. Now, we've since seen the same process happens with glutathione, with silent nights, with Eon, through different mechanisms. Uh, it's not, but, but some of times it's because we increase an antioxidant production in the cell, and that facilitated the release of toxic waste. So there's different mechanisms involved with different patch products, but one of the things we've seen is we increase the voltage potential of the cell membrane. Now, with ice wave patches, you cannot see the conductive circuit. So we have to move the patches around to create a current flow between the positive and negative patches. So in addition, the normal pathways are disrupted in dysfunctional tissue. So what might be a positive zone might be a negative zone and vice versa. And so what we're looking at is, let's say here's a painful area right here. And this is what's called a bracket technique. And we pick a spot and we put an ice wave positive above or around to one side of the pane, and we put a tan to the other side, 
and you and you go, how do you feel? And they go, I don't really notice anything. So then you move the patch here, and they go, oh, I don't notice anything. And then you move the tan patch here, and they go, you know, I'm out of pain. So you finally found a spot where you got an electrically conductive circuit reestablished. And so if you hit that spot the first time, two seconds later, they're out of pain. Now, most of the time, it's going to be a minute or two or three or whatever as you're finding the right location. Another way of applying the patches is to put the brown patch on the pain spot. So here we have the pain spot, and we take the white patch, and we say we move it above. And they go, how do you feel? No, I don't notice anything. Well, how about when I move it here? Uh, not really. And that, that's just how fast I'm moving them. So I usually put a piece of tape on it and then move it here. Then I move it over here and go, how do you feel here? Mm, a little bit better. Oh, okay. Is it better here or here? Oh, oh, it's much better the second place. Are you out of pain? No, not really. Oh, okay. Well, how about if I move it here? Oh, my God, I'm out of pain. So it's a matter of finding the right circuits. And since you can't see them, recognize that the tissue is electrically conductive. So if you find a circuit that's, uh, that's, that's normal, you can get the signal between the patches. Now, acupuncture points are one way of doing this. They're entry points to the body's electrical system. Acupoints are skin areas with high electrical conductivity. They overlie connective tissue, semiconducting, liquid crystal proteins. What am I trying to say? Basically, an acupuncture is lying on an electrical transmission line. So you have an acupuncture point, and underlying it is an electrical circuit, or electrical transmission line. So you stimulate that acupuncture point, and all of a sudden you create an electrical, trans you create an electrical signal through the normal conductive material. And that's basically what you're doing. So we find that the proteins of the body, they have semiconductive properties. They're piezoelectric. That means if they're stretched, they'll actually create an electrical signal. This is why people move, exercise, or dance, or stretch, or yoga. They feel better because they're actually activating these circuits through stretching the tissue. Pyroelectric means they'll respond to heat. This is why some people respond to hot packs. This is why some people respond to amoxibust. They're also photoelectric, which means they'll generate electrical currents by light. So they have some interesting electronic properties when you start looking at the fact that the materials that the body is made up of has the ability to conduct electricity when, they're, when their pressure is put on, when needles are put in, when light is put in, when heat is put in. This is why there's so many different um, types of acupuncture modalities out there, from laser acupuncture stimulation to electrical stimulation to, uh, to pressure stimulation to heat stimulation. So we find that the meridians are electrical circuits, and the acupuncture points have greater electrical conductance than, normal, than nearby tissue. We also find that disrupting the, the energy conduits disorganizes the electrical control system. So you want to be able, let's say the system's broken here, you want to be able to create some kind of bypass and reestablish a circuit flow. This is an example of, say, a nerve cell. Here's the nerve body. Here's the axon. And if you look at it, basically you have an electromagnetic field. Is it since the electrical current is flowing through this axon, a magnetic field is created around it in space. It would be a, <clears throat> kind of like a, a, a squash in a sense. Uh, so it's three-dimensional. It's not two-dimensional like this. So we find that the bioelectrical properties of nerve cells and proteins create the meridians and electromagnetic fields. And electromagnetic field blockages disrupt the balance of energy flow and the functioning of the whole system. So a correction of blocked energy flow is beneficial. One of the things we've seen is improved nerve conduction. We've had uh, one study that was done in Italy that found improved nerve conduction, and we've seen hundreds of people who've had uh, different problems with loss of sensation in a limb or, or an arm or a leg or 
or they have problems uh, with what's called a drop foot. They, they they're, they're, they're one of the nerves is in a damage and they can't lift up their foot. And we put patches on, and they have they regain some of these these uh, these functions. And so, in my opinion, one of the things we're doing is improving nerve conduction. We don't completely understand why that's the case, but this is a this is a, a an observational uh, an observation that I've made from looking at hundreds of cases. So stimulation of acupuncture point can be done by pressure, by needle, by magnetic field, by electrical field, or a light or photonic energy. And we're going to basically change the charge of cell membranes, and we're going to create change the conductivity of the underlying polymers, the protein hyaluronic polymers that connect the tissue cells and the circulation. So this is basically your bio circuit. And so we find because we can change the cell's battery function and we can renormalize tissue electrical currents, we can start improving functions in the body, including organ function. And our electro-interstitial scan research, EIS research, which is a way of measuring the electronic properties of organ, has shown with just about every patch we've tested so far that we improve organ function at least from an electronic measurement. So we find that biological electrical currents will flow in these semiconducting proteins through all parts of the body into the interior of cells. So we find cells are wired in from the outside to the inside. There's what's called a cytoskeleton. And so we find that they're, they're completely wired into the body. So I'm not talking about red blood cells and white blood cells that are floating around. I'm talking about solid organs. Solid organs are wired into a hardwired communication system that extends down to the deepest part of the cell, down even to the DNA, down to the mitochondria, down to every portion of the cell there is an electrical circuitry that is tied into. So it's basically solid state chemistry. So life wave patch development incorporates an advance in the management of bioelectromagnetic energy with the recognition that every cell and system of cells operates with bioelectromagnetic magnetic energy at specific frequencies. This has allowed David Smith to tap into bioelectromagnetic processes. So we find the patches are able to absorb wavelengths of light that come off the body and out of the infrared band. And there are materials in the patch that David showed you, these little crystals. And basically, the patch is a liquid, is a, is a, um, a crystal radio set. And, and, and if, if you want a physics term, you can look up, you can look up a crystal radio set. So patches operate on many of the principles of crystal radio sets. And they basically, a crystal radio set, if you've ever built one or you, or you look them up, you can find that you can actually pick up radio signals and you don't have a battery. You're using a crystal and using this to transduce energy from one form to another. So what happens is the crystals will absorb this infrared energy and then will transmit a frequency into the body. So basically it's like radio stations. By changing the formulas of these crystals, it's like FM radio. You got FM 96 that plays rock and roll, and FM 100 that plays country, and FM 101 that plays classical music. So changing the formulas changes the frequency band of information coming back out of the patches into the body. So we find that these specific materials absorb and reflect specific infrared wavelengths. We know that the human body radiates infrared energy in the range of what is called it's 1,000 to 20,000 nanometers or 1 to 20 microns. The FDA has recognized that specific wavelengths of infrared produce desirable effects such as pain relief. And multiple research programs have demonstrated that wavelengths of light can produce other physiological effects such as cellular proliferation, wound healing, and elevation of energy production. David's extended that also to include, to include improve antioxidant uh, production as well as improve sleep. So we're fine that these materials, go ahead. 
Yeah, I, I was just, I was just fascinating. That was just fascinating. Um, quick question here. You, um, the part about light therapy. Are we talking about the different colors of light can produce different kinds of uh, effects? Yeah, you. That, that's that's not what I'm talking about. That is a true okay. statement. Uh, what we're looking at is wavelengths in the infrared band primarily is different. If the infrared band is, is let's say, 700 nanometers, I'm, I'm, I can't write, 700 nanometers to 20,000 nanometers, you got a lot of wavelengths in there. And let's say, for example, that wavelength 1,012 will have an 1,012 through 1,020 will have an effect on um, glutathione production. Yet wavelength, say, uh, 2,022 might put you to sleep. So I'm just saying, basically, by changing the formulas, we're actually able to change the wavelengths that the patches put out in this band of energy. Uh, between 700 nanometers and 20,000 nanometers, and we're putting out—we're not putting out one single wavelength. We're putting out a wavelength band between certain areas. Got it. And so, got it. Okay. And <laughs> it's through these these crystals that we create in the patches that we we pr produce these bands of energy. And this crystal is going to produce a different band of energy than this one here. And this one here. Is what I'm trying to say. So it's and uh, so it's basically like um, we're, we're in a sense we're reflecting or transmitting back specific signals. Is what I'm trying to say. It's like it's, it. it's, it's information signals. In, in a radio station, it's music. In a radio station, it's Elvis or you know Beatles. Or another station was going to be playing Mozart or Beethoven. Uh, it's they're both putting out radio signals, but they've got different information coded. In patches, we're putting out infrared signals, but we've got different information coding in there. So uh, the, the, the patches absorb basically the same wavelength of in, infrared, but what they put out is different depending on the, the way the, the crystals are constructed? I think that's pretty accurate. Okay. I mean, the body's going to put, basically, the body's the power source. You've got, you've got this band of energy being radiated from the body. Patches are picking up and absorbing this energy, but then the crystals are transmitting a very small band back in. So you're basically taking a wide band of energy, of, in a sense, noise, and creating information. Got it. Right. Interesting. Interesting. So one of the things we can do is we create antioxidant or anti-inflammatory effects. So we can initiate specific metabolic changes. So basically, the patches are organic molecular antennas that can transmit what are called photobiological messages needed for initiating metabolic changes. Here's a, here's a transmission antenna. In this case, you're looking at a cell phone. And look at, the, look at these wires, the way they are. Remember that picture I showed you of the cell, and it had these little things sticking out like this? That's those, except we're smaller. <clears throat> this is working in the radio, microwave band, and this is working in the infrared band. If this infrared is a higher frequency, therefore the wavelengths are going to be smaller. That means the antennas are going to be correspondingly smaller, and the antennas are going to be the size of molecules on cells. But they're the same process as these, these little antennas that are sticking off this thing, when we see the cell membrane and you see these little proteins, uh, sugar proteins sticking off here, that's going to pick up a different wavelength of energy than this one over here, or a different frequency. Here's a frequency-specific antenna. Here's another frequency-specific antenna. We see these crystals are created in the patch, and the patches are made up of uh, natural substances. So we're using natural organic materials that are non-toxic. You could actually open them up, suck them out, and eat them. Probably wouldn't taste that good, but they're not going to hurt you. Um, you don't want to, there's a medical grade adhesive, same adhesive found on Band-Aids. 
we have two pieces of plastic and the, the polyethylene, and it's the same type of material made in medical takes. Matter of fact, we make our products in factories that make medical devices. So we make them under very high standards. And so we use a medical device manufacturing system in order to manufacture our products. Now we're making them under, they're not sterile, they're not designed to be sterile because you're going to put them on skin, but you want to put them on unbroken skin. And so what we're looking at are these crystals are sitting here. And this is an example of the wavelengths coming off one of the energy patches right here. This wave number is another way of looking at wavelength. And so you find that here's this energy band. Now if you had a different patch, you might find this peak over here is a little different, and this one over here is a little different. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it does. So, so basically, and uh, when I first heard about these patches, they were you, they were being used for for athletes that it seemed to enhance their performance. So basically, these were emitting or reflecting from a, a different kind of energy wave that produce energy in their bodies as opposed to pain, reducing pain. Right. Now, what reason I presented this information is to help you understand something. This is an advanced technology. This is an advance very similar to how cell phones were an advance over hardwired phones that stuck in your house. As a doctor, I carried a pager for many years because I had to be able to be, the hospital had to be a way of getting in touch with me when I had patients in the hospital. Yet when cell phones came into, but, but pager, you had to leave, take this thing, and then you had to go to a phone that was plugged into the wall and call the hospital. Then cell phones came around back in the late 80s, early 90s, and all of a sudden we were freed up. We could go do things, go, go out and not have to be stuck in one place by a phone, but still had access to communication system. So cell phones have completely changed the way business and people conduct their lives nowadays. I mean, most people that have kids or teenagers, the kids have a cell phone, so you can stay in contact with them. But that didn't exist 30 years ago like that. And so what right. I'm trying to say is a cell phone is a major technological advance. The patches have many of the functional properties of a radio or a cell phone, except what we're sending in are signals that the body is already adapted to receive. It's designed to receive these signals. So we're actually using electrical materials that are natural substances so that the signals are an exact match for the human body or animal bodies. Hmm. And this so is the same process. Go ahead. So, so because every human being is an electrical conducting being, these patches will or should work in every instance, provided they are used properly. Yeah, they should and work as long as the person is properly hydrated and has adequate mineralization. We, we have found that the patches do not work well if a person is dehydrated. And that already explained that the hydration is important for the normal electrical properties of the cells and the tissues to function. Second, the minerals are important to the electrical properties of the cell. So if a person is severely minerally deficient or severely dehydrated, they're not going to have an adequate response. So now, those would be the two things you would look for if this thing, if the patches aren't working as well as they should. Right, and that in the wrong location. Wrong location, got, got it. That's um, user error, so to speak, right? Right. User error, okay. Now, patches, in a sense, are similar to laser communication that's used by the military. They're, they're using light beams that they're putting information on that they can transmit from one place to another. Basically, we're doing the same thing. We're using light as an informational carrier. Now, I want to I want to go over this for a minute, which I think is really important. There's something called the scaling law, and the scaling law base or scaling phenomenon basically means that the same processes are exist at all levels. So if you look at a, uh, go to the ocean and pick up a shell on the beach, say a nautilus shell, you'll find a spiral shell. You go to a telescope and look up into space, you'll find a spiral galaxy. If you look at the cell, you'll find spiral proteins. Galaxy, 
shell, proteins. It's the same, same, same uh, mathematics are involved. Uh, the thing that's called the phi ratio. Basically, you'll see the same, same uh, pattern uh, all the way. Now, these are sunspots. And you'll see the sunspot erupting, and this is the magnetic field lines. Now, let's say this is the surface of the body. Here's one acupuncture point. Here's another acupuncture point. Here's another acupuncture point. If you study this from a biophysics point of view, you find that acupuncture points, there's this whirls of magnetic energy that comes out of the body and enters, and that's how acupuncture is similar to sunspots on the solar surface. You have these magnetic field lines that extend out into space. Because remember, it's an electrically conductive tissue, and electrically conductive tissues have magnetic fields, and this is how the magnetic field presents. I think that's important to recognize that the same phenomenon exists at all levels. So we found that eon patches will enhance parasympathetic activity, which reduces stress. And they found that they've been most effective when placed on acupuncture points over skin areas that are electrically positive. That's why the eon patch is placed on the right side of the body or on the midline on the front or the back. These are more electrically positive points. Our heart rate variability study, huh? Then the left side, so the right side is positive, the left side is negative. Is that in rule? general, in 95% in of people, although some people are polarity reversal. And sometimes you'll find the person won't respond until you put the patch on the other side on the exact spot because their polarity is reversed. Interesting. <laughs> so and the autonomic nervous system has two components. They have a braking component and an accelerator component. And so... You don't want to be constantly under acceleration because that's a sad state of stress. And so when we put the eon patches on, we found that the body would go into a more relaxed state. It would go into a parasympathetic swing. And so this is less stress. So they elicit an enhanced parasympathetic response. And that allows the body to rebalance itself. And so that, that can we cause a lower heart rate or more relaxed blood vessels or reduce tension. Doc, do you, have, examples. do you have a specific video where you address this in the short video format, the parasympathetic response? Oh, I don't know. I mean, there may be some around. I mean, I've been talking about these things in various – I don't remember making one particularly of that. Uh, I think we did one on Eon, so there may be an Eon video that we talked about it. Because, this, I mean, everything is fantastic, but, but, but that's because people can relate, especially to the whole sympathetic parasympathetic thing, showing them how these factors actually balance that out specifically. That, 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 is, that would be huge. Let well, we've got, we've got papers on this. this is, we've got them on the website about showing this research. Um, but right. let me talk to you about how resonance works for a moment. You know, like how, how can a pay, how can a, Wireless technology work. Okay, here's a tuning fork. It worked earlier. I'm not going to do it today. All right, this tuning fork, if you strike this tuning fork, it'll cause this other one to vibrate if it's the same. Let's say this is a middle C tuning fork. So if you place two tuning forks at the same frequency near one another and strike one, the second tuning fork will vibrate because of what's called resonant energy transfer. The same phenomenon occurs in all materials. All substances have a resonant frequency. That means if you, if you uh, have that resonant frequency, that other sub, that's, if, you have a resonant, if you have a mechanism of creating a resonant frequency that matches, this other substance will pick it up. It will respond to it. Okay. So basically we're constructing antennas from molecules that transmits specific frequencies that specific molecules will respond to. So we're, the patch is actually sending out a signal that some molecules inside the body are going to resonate to, and they're going to initiate a reaction. 
just like the tuning fork. Now I'm almost finished. GDB is a what's called gas discharge visualization techniques that allows you to view energy fields. So the Corellian effect is the glow around the edge of an object in a high intensity field. And these are actual pictures of some of GDB's pictures of our patches. Here's the white patch, energy patch, and here's the tan patch. And you can see the energy field around these patches are a little bit different. Right. Now if we put patches on the kidney points on the feet, on the inside of the ankles here, positive white on the right, tan on the left, and in this example we did 10 minutes later, we found that the energy field or the biofield of the person increased 73 percent. And so here, look how weak this field is here, and it's much stronger here. Look at how weak it's here and how much stronger it is here. Mm. And so you see this field effect has strengthened. So overall, the patches have improved the biofield of the body which, as we talked about in the first slide, is the control mechanism of the chemistry. And this is an example so the, of a glutathione patch. So the brighter the, the biofield or the brighter the light around the person's body that can be seen on the instruments, the healthier the person is? Yes. Oh. In my opinion, yes. Okay. Well, the stronger their battery effect is, I mean, and look, would you rather have a weak battery or a strong battery? If I if I'm going out at night, let's say I have to walk through the forest and I've got a flashlight, or a cave, let's say I'm in a cave, I don't want a flashlight that's batteries are almost dead. I want a fully charged flashlight. And so if my body is a, it has battery function and the battery function is going to control, part of the control mechanism of how the cells process food, how they, how they build proteins, how they manufacture DNA, if that is properly powered up, then those mechanisms are going to be operating properly. But if the battery function is weak, you're not going to be able to repair properly. And this is just an example of a person with a, a GDB of um, with with the glutathione patch. And again, we see how small this field is, let's say here, and how much thicker it is here, how much thicker it is here. So it's a stronger, stronger field. And that's all from my slides. This is amazing, Doc. This is just amazing. Thank you so much for this. I mean, this really explains this a lot, lot, a lot, lot better and uh, helps us to really appreciate what you're talking about. I want to take it back so we can uh, have have your picture up again. And okay. And what we're going to do, folks, is that you can start. I know the questions have already been coming in on Doc. You can take a look at the questions and see which ones you want to tackle, or if you you would rather I uh, read them out, so we can do that. Uh, well. I'll, I'll run over a couple. Okay. Now, I don't know if the patches have anything to do with hair loss on the dog. There's a question of what patch do you place on a dog with <laughs> hair loss. Um, but where you, where you would place patches would be on the on the on the back on the backbone, or under the belly. Now you might try a glutathione patch or an eon patch just below the belly button, going toward the tail side. So um, belly button would be one spot, and then you go a little bit past that toward the tail, and you can put it there, or you can put the patch on the top of the dog. Now you, some people will put uh, energy patches on, and they'll they'll go right to the backbone, and they'll put them. Uh, uh, right where the hips come together, about ha half an inch off the backbone on either side, right, white right on the right, tan on the left. 